Yeah, okay, so this is the, the prop stand my dad built for me when I started out. You had to have a prop stand, right? And this is a classic, I don't know where we found the design, but someone told us kind of the general idea. <laughs> you know, it's got like the grooves in for the clubs. And then uh, it's got these uh, cool, cool whip containers, <laughs> you know, painted black. So like these, <laughs> these are cool whip. And then it's got the, you know, your juggling balls in there. And then, because you have to juggle balls, rings, and clubs, so of course you have the, the ring hook on the back. <laughs> right? And, uh, and then it's got the big, the big black bag, so then when you, you know, you do your act, and then, oh, I gotta get the clubs, but I don't have time, I don't have time to put it all back in the, the cool whip. I put it in the bag, and then I get the clubs, you know? Yeah, yeah. and then. <laughs> Right, and then I can't hook them back because the music's going, and so and then you can mm -hmm. do the ring. The ring is a surprise. Yeah, well. Can't I, see it. Sure. <laughs> I don't think I played up the surprise. But I mean, <laughs> I mean, looking back on it, this was the the first thing my dad made, and it really did start this tradition of, of him making me things. Yeah. I mean, and so I think besides that very you know simple premise, the other thing that came from it was most of the things that we're gonna look at started off as prop stands. And it was this idea of like, you have a prop stand, maybe it can do something a little bit, like you were saying how the ring is a surprise, or whatever, I mean, you know, visually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was kind of this idea of thinking like, okay, I got these prop stands, what else can they do? Maybe they do a little trick on the way of holding a prop or something. Yeah, right. Like I was saying with that first prop stand with the, the drum, the metal drum hardware, um, it became about holding the balls, and then the next idea was, could the prop stand interact with the juggling somehow? So this was the first one we made, following on from that. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, it's just a kickboard, right, with a fulcrum here. But then for some reason, you know, we were gonna put two balls on it, two of those little landing pads. Like, uh -huh. we could have just a wide board, <laughs> but, you know, had to like, the technique had to, you know, inform the design, right? So, <laughs> so yeah, but then the idea was, you know, you put it there and then uh, grab, grab some bean bags and uh, put those on each of the little pads and then yeah. come up <laughs> like that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, it started off this idea that you could make, you could make juggling tricks also through making new props. Yeah. And what a gift it was that my dad had a workshop next door and time and interest and skills to make and I use this for years in my shows. I go do the, the local fire department Halloween banquet or the Cub Scout, you know, black and no blue and gold banquet stuff. You heard that stuff? The Cub Scouts? Uh -huh. Yeah, blue and blue and gold banquets and then this would be totally a trick at the start of the show. Like <laughs> um but yeah pretty cool. And then but then this evolved into this next one which was the this second. Is, sorry, this is chronologically right after the. Yeah, after the big, the first one. prop stand. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Cool. Okay. But then you know, so that, so so that second one, it just has the, uh, the little. I don't know what you call these shelves. Nubs. Yeah. <laughs> to hold the bean bags, and of course, if you have like a round ball, it doesn't stay, and uh -huh. and the balls would fall off in the show, and then get a bad kick, and all this. Uh -huh. So then we made we made uh, we made version two. <laughs> which has a little a little cup in it uh -huh. and then it would hold a, a round ball and not a beanbag and then there was another problem with the with the first version which was that when you would stomp on it you really had to be consistent with your stomp yeah. and we wanted to change that in such a way that you could stomp at whatever like a consistent stomp like you could always get a consistent kick without you know learning it in your body so the idea was you put a little rope on the bottom there <laughs> and then the game was just to hit this as hard as you could because right. it doesn't matter then yeah. you know as long as you have enough force to make the string go go straight yeah. to go tight it would always stop there and throw the ball up cool. so you could just indiscriminately like whack the ball up you know with no without any thought at all uh -huh. um i don't know why it only throws one up i mean that seems like a you step down <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, i don't know but uh yeah. Nice. Nice. <laughs> yeah, so we had uh, 
And I don't remember, I know with that, I know with that first one with the two balls, I would do three balls and then stomp it and go into five. Yeah. Like I flash three. But this one, I don't remember. Ah, maybe that was, <laughs> was it like gonna do another one? And then that's kind yeah. of the moment. Was this when you were a kid that you were using this one? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, both yeah. of these, like when I'm 13 years, you sure, know, 11, sure. 12, 13 years old. Right. 14, 15, all the way through high school doing shows. This was in the show. For the life of me, I can't remember what, the, yeah, what yeah. this moment was, but there was a moment where I'm just like, hey, audience. Totally. I bet audiences were pumped to see a little kid do that, you know? Yeah, it's good stuff. <laughs> I don't know. I, don't, yeah. I mean, I don't really get it right now, but yeah, it was a really cool, I mean, really amazing. It, you know, it doesn't seem like such a big deal. But this idea of, oh, now we have to have a, like the prop is certain, like suddenly you can expand the, sh the property. It's not a bean bag, it can be a ball. Yeah. And that was an issue. And then that you have the, you know, you're gonna fix the strength of the stomp. You know, looking back on it, when we get to more advanced designs, it was like really important learning uh -huh. process. Yeah. <laughs> At the time it seems completely banal and just like stupid or, you know, kind of not very important. But when we get yeah, yeah. farther on it, it was like, part of the learning how to design things. Are these things you asked for? Or was your dad like, I have an idea, you should have this kitty thing? That's a great question. Uh, like I say, the first prop stand with the with the drum stand and the clubs and the balls and the rings, that was just something we had copied, that like you have your ditch bag, yeah. the bag to ditch stuff in when you're done, right. and <laughs> you have your slots for the clubs and, and whatever. Um, and I think for sure that first kickboard was my idea. And then my, for sure, my dad came with this idea. Cool. Was like, hey, if we put a string on there, I've been thinking about it, you know. And sometimes he would definitely come to me with ideas, but for the most part, it was kind of a back and forth conversation cool. through objects. Yeah. This is really, and then you see them existing, you know, <laughs> like the concrete <laughs> manifestation of that, you know, exploration. Yeah. Um, yeah, pretty cool, pretty weird. I mean, this all seems like, this is my childhood. So it all seems so obvious and a little bit maybe dull or a little bit, I don't know, you know, not important or something. But if I look at my life today, I don't do this right. in my work. Like it's part of a, my process of being an artist. I don't build objects and iterate on them in the same way. I don't have access to a wood studio or a workshop and my dad's not around over in Sweden. So right. definitely a different way to work. I miss it. I mean, it's amazing. Yeah. Um, Did you help build any of these crafts or were they all... So yeah, when my yeah when my dad uh, my dad would work in the workshop and we should we should totally go check out the workshop later. Um, yeah, he'd always bring me over and be like, okay, Jay, measure this, and then, you know, try to try to teach me how to use a screwdriver and a hammer and <laughs> pound a nail in, which I was terrible at. I could juggle, but I can't build anything. So that's probably also why I don't work like this today. Yeah. I mean, I didn't I didn't really get that skill so naturally, but absolutely, it was it was me spending time in the in the workshop with my dad which was really cool, right? Super like cool. looking back, back at that. Yeah. So, so then, yeah, besides the, the kick up, kick up boards, there's the, uh, the ring holders, which again are pretty obvious, but it's kind of fun because this one, these two, right, they're, they're the right height for you to, for you to, uh, yeah, that's the, <laughs> that's, that's the joy of using wood, you know, <laughs> it, it expands and contracts and they stick, but yeah. <laughs> that happened in shows. Oh yeah, for sure that happened in shows when you went to take it out, they were sick. But that also goes back to this idea of an aesthetic, you know, just this idea that like, I want my rings to stand up. And I think that was also an unconscious thing that got ingrained in my work is that we're doing something that's aesthetic, that's something that's visual. And we want to consider the audience's viewpoint. You know, when we did this at the time, it wasn't, I could not have articulated that, but that's what it is. Sure. Like, I don't want the rings just to lay there. That's so boring, but it's like, it's so dynamic when it's standing up and you can, the other, the other thing about standing all the rings up is like, how many am I going to do? <laughs> you know, there's, there's, right? Or shadowing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like, it's like buildings, like yeah. drama, like, oh, yeah. there's three rings, you know, yeah, yeah. but that was all part, I mean, that was really part of this, this early performing, you know, aesthetic and, and idea. Uh -huh. So then, yeah. So then with the, but these, these were the right. I mean, even today, I guess they're the, the good height, even though I'm probably <laughs> twice as tall, but you yeah, so you, can, like this. you know, so you can be here and then you can like go into the floor, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> Without stopping. Yeah. And again, this idea that like, these are facilita 
facilitating a trick that wouldn't exist without that object. Yeah. So it's not just a prop stand, but it there's a moment when it becomes part of the juggling. I mean, a very brief moment that's not super uh, advanced, but yeah, go from three to four without stopping to pick it up. Yeah. Like, oh, it's a trick. Right. And kind of selling it like that to the audience. Well, it's a fun, fun idea. But for those ones, what did you just like pick them up? The ones on the floor? Yeah, without yeah, yeah, those were definitely just decoration. Yeah, I got you. Okay, I got you. <laughs> Which is kind of funny that, the, the, like, again, this idea that you're decorating the stage and you're, it's not all utilitarian. Yeah. Or at least it, it, it is all functional, but it, there, it carries an aesthetic, it's a visual approach. And, you know, now even just thinking this out loud with you, it's like, I always did think that juggling was a visual thing, um, like a visual art form. Mm -hmm. So just this idea that you would present the props in a visual way, um, not just, you know, because you could just have them all, you know, the rings could just be like laying on the floor. Mm -hmm. And for sure, that's what they were doing before I had that bigger, that first prop stand and before I had these, they were just laying on the floor. But then it's this idea that, oh no, juggling's visual, the audience should understand what's happening, maybe how many are there, maybe build some anticipation. He's going to use all those rings, or I, I don't know. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, and then those, those things all became really ingrained in my work later on in a more sophisticated way, but For it was sure. there from the beginning. For sure, yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. So that's funny. So then, this kind of, but, but still, you, I, I would say that these things are pretty practical in one way. Like, it's, it's a stick with a, place where, you know, it's not uh, like, hey, what's that thing doing? Well, it's holding the ring up, right? It's, it's pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. So I can give an example of like an evolution from here, which is that this stick holding the ring is it's just straight. You know, the stick isn't like curved. Uh -huh. like, like, you know, diving more into the visual side. Sure. So then it started to be like, like this, like the ball stands, uh -huh. it became, uh, so the ball stands just became more visual, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Like, like it holds the it holds the ball, but the the stick is curved. Right. Um, it was just that evolution of this being merely practical towards some sort of idea of like a larger aesthetic. Right. Or I, I don't know. I like that these two have little rings and the other ones don't. Sort of a some sort of visual language of the show that was consistent throughout. Just not just the technique, but also just the, the the costume, the set design, the the title of the show, or you know whatever the attitude, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Like how you interact with the audience. Um, so these were, let's see, you gotta see, you gotta see what it looks like with all the same color ball, you know, <laughs> to get the real effect, right? <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, but I love, I don't know, I love these, they're, they're, they're sculptures, you know? Yeah. And it was also my first attempt, like, so I designed all of the, I designed all of the, the you know, the, like the layout. I designed the layout of all of these, um, just with the pen, pen and paper. Huh. But then the idea was that juggling could be a, like kind of <laughs> juggling on its own or like a sculpture on its own, right? So it's a kind of a, a work of art on its own, just sitting there was like a first kind of unconscious unconscious thought that was manifested like this and maybe explored more relevantly later on in my work. But this was definitely the first attempt where I'm like, oh, well the juggling itself, before I'm even juggling the props, it could be displayed in a, a juggling way. <laughs> or sure. Do you know what I mean? Sure, sure. And so, and, and so then one really funny thing is I came up with all these curved, these curved uh, support structures for the balls. And so this is just a PVC pipe that you buy at the hardware store, but my dad had to learn how to, to make this. And so, you know, you can't just really heat up pipe and, and bend it because it, it will crimp. Mm. I mean, it will just collapse the, the, the wall if it gets hot enough, right, so that it bends. Sure. The structure will just uh, collapse. <laughs> so it wasn't maybe straightforward, so he had to put a spring inside that was as big as the, you know, the width or the diameter inside the, uh -huh. the tube. And then you could heat it up using a, I think he just used a super hot hair dryer, maybe not, but something like, yeah, really just heating up that point and then you could start to bend it and you use the spring inside it when it collapsed the, right. and so already from there it's like, oh yeah, I have this little, little silly drawing of a, <laughs> of a prop stand, um, 
yeah, I'll just bend some pipe. Oh, <laughs> that took, you know, two weeks of figuring out how that worked. <laughs> yeah, I, like looking at it, it looks like wrought iron or something. Like you sawed off part of a plant hanger or something. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, that was that's crazy that you just made it. Yeah, you cool. <laughs> but that's also like my that's also very much my dad's uh, my dad's attitude of yeah. Let's just make it and yeah, this is all PVC, so then it's all painted. Yeah. And then going back to the idea of the Velcro bag, I mean, yeah, all these things come out for travel. Totally. <laughs> so you can pack pack them flat. Um, yeah. 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 So there's that one. Let's see these other ones here. Did you interact with this in a juggly way, or was it just like grab? Just literally grab them, um, but it was part of. So then there's all these little, these little other ones. Uh, let's try the yellow ones on that. Let's see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. I don't know. Oh yeah. Whatever. I mean, again, this isn't like groundbreaking or crazy or anything, but it is. It is a step above the the cool whip container. <laughs> like, nice. It's, it's nice. a step above yeah. the, the spray painted like like whipped cream. 100%. Box. <laughs> Agreed. And it's so definitely it's a step aesthetic. towards, yeah. yeah, it's a step towards having some sort of consideration about like how things look besides just how they function. And uh -huh. Again, you can count the things and they're, they're displayed. Yeah. And also they're displayed with some sort of respect. Like just having just the three different levels and, mm -hmm. and taking the time to build the support for the props, mm -hmm. you, get into, you get into some sort of unconscious feeling of like, oh, I care about these things. Right. And, be, and I did, and I did, and I do care about those things, right? But I really did care about them and beyond just throwing them around and then, and then throwing them in the Velcro bag. <laughs> Which I always felt like was so kind of weird when I did it, you know? Yeah, it's weird. So like when I would use this in the show, you know, I would take them, not really with a trick or anything, but I would use them. And then when I was done though, I would put them back. Right. And then I, of course I'd always put the last one back, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Period. Yeah, I mean, I mean theatrically. But, it gives some sort of taste of like, hey, this this person actually respects these objects, and so then hopefully maybe the audience respects them a little bit as well, right? A little bit more. It sort of like gives the opportunity or the possibility that you might go back to it too. Like you don't really know, like right. It's not necessarily linear. How it's you move through that's a great point. Rocks. Thank you. Yeah, that's a super good point. In, in the shows, and this was this would be when I was probably you know 18 years old. These came about. Um, so I'm a little bit older, a little bit more mature, or a little bit farther along in the thinking of what I'm doing with why I'm doing shows. Mm -hmm. But you're kind of creating a world on stage. You're not creating, like you said, a linear progression of like, and, and this idea of like a linear progression of the juggling, um, it's maybe more than those, those things are tricks. Like, oh, you, okay, I did the ball tricks and the balls are gone. I did those tricks and we're done. Yeah. Whereas this, I do some juggling that's a little bit maybe elevated than just tricks, but it's more you're creating an aesthetic or a rhythm or a world or a character or a mm -hmm. vibe or an attitude. Mm -hmm. And then those go back because the world still is, is around us or something. Yeah. Right. It's just elevating a little bit the, I mean, <laughs> slightly. Here, let's look at, so then there's also, um, let's see, like this one is just the, uh, here we have the, you know, the spike, the glow spike tape, so you can strike it in the dark, you know, in the theater. Oh. <laughs> so you don't knock it over in the, nice. in the blackout. But then, yeah, so then, yeah. So then here, um, the idea, and then, and then, and then the, this idea is, you know, just the ball should be equidistant diagonal or something. And so then maybe the, the structure itself isn't the focus here, but rather the, the props themselves were the focus was an attempt at that. Uh -huh. Again, not a very deep, <laughs> I dig it, though. A deep dive into that idea, but this idea of like, okay, the props are more important than the thing it's on. Yeah. And like, what does that mean? And or like, you just can enjoy them both separately. Right. The thing it's on has a nice vibe too, mm. but then you can like, it's curvy and kind of like weird, and then you right. focus on the balls and it's like. Right. There's some sort of oh, I enjoy it. more clear, yeah, some <laughs> sort of more clear, <laughs> clear idea. But I like that stand. That's super cool. Uh -huh. I mean, I mean, as 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 silly or. And, and again, I, I say trivial, these aren't like groundbreaking, like we're not curing cancer here. But just to say, like, I haven't seen anything like this my whole life. True. Just to say. True. I mean, this got made back in 1995, 94, uh -huh. 95, 93, something like that. That's a really good point. So, how, so we're 30 years later now, mm -hmm. almost, right? Mm -hmm. And I haven't seen prop stands like this. And I mean, even for me, again, to recognize my own process of my work. Yeah. Uh, I don't do this stuff anymore. And I wish I would have stuck with it. I mean, in one way, because to follow this along, you know, a 30 year 
process of building things it would no, be crazy, right? Yeah, yeah. The balls would be like invisibly suspended and moving yeah, yeah. and like, I don't know what they would be. Yeah. But that's a cool one. Um, here's a nice one. Let's see. This one here. So again, here the, the balls make a very um, kind of normal expected, you know, straightforward shape, but then the, the support structure is, again, that bent PVC. Would you use all of these in one yeah. show? Okay. Yeah. It's cool. So it was the set design for a show. What show was it? It was with me and uh, Ritz Groba and Morty Hansen where we did Blink up at the Celebration Barn Theater in Maine. Mm -hmm. cool. So yeah, there's that. I really like that one. It was really cool how it bends around. And that was, of course, really hard to... <laughs> like, it looks so easy, but... <laughs> to bend those around. I mean, how do you, how did we bend those? I, re I remember bending these with my dad and it took forever. And, um, here's that one. I'll show you my favorite one. Nice. <laughs> um, yeah, let's see here. This one, this triangle one. Yeah. And this was, uh, if you want to put the yellow ones on there. <laughs> this was again the idea that the balls are more or less in a straight line. Uh -huh. Yeah, and the, cool. the support structures are yeah. in different ways. I like that a lot. Me too. And it was very, uh, very much foreshadowing. Well, not foreshadowing because this was after the micro motion triangle, but I'm sure there was a my interest in micro motion. Like it was foreshadowing because like, this is my favorite one. And it's the like triangles the, are cool. The triangle one, yeah. <laughs> so this is my micro motion tribute. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> nice. But yeah, I like that one. Yeah, they each add like a slightly new. Concept. And then this one was, uh, if you want to grab the triangle, this one was probably, this one could have been the first, uh, the first one that we made before, I actually made this one alone. Um, I forget where my dad, my dad was somewhere and I needed this, so <laughs> I actually, he did teach me something, right, because I was able to build this myself. Um, but this one could have been the first one before all the curved sticks. Like really the, the kind of the, the evolution from the, the right. ring uh -huh. of like, you know, here's one ball. Oh, I, I actually need nine balls. So let's start to have some sort of idea Yeah. from there. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's the cobwebs, but this gives me like a fortress vibe. Or that <laughs> it's like a dark feeling. And I think this one, this one again was because it, it was early directly related to the ring stand. This was at the right height for me to grab. Like I remember, I had to measure that one because I was gonna do a trick. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. Yeah. But yeah, I love this one too. This is super fun. Um, kind of juggling sculpture things. So they were all for that one show. Did, did any of them ever come back? Not really. Um, I mean, that's a good point. Like around that same time, because that would be. Like through high school, I was performing here in the area, here in Ohio, and uh, I could have like, you know, I could have the ring stand, you know. Um, but already there in high school, I was traveling quite a bit to different states and different shows or whatever. Mm -hmm. But by the time I graduated high school, I was traveling to, to England and stuff, and it really started the international travel, so I couldn't carry, I couldn't carry, even, even though they come apart. Yeah, even though he couldn't, they, they came apart, like it, it became, I, you know, I had to carry the balls, the clubs, and the rings, and whatever else, and so this kind of phased out pretty quickly after I started moving around. So they didn't really come back into the work, um, like directly, like as these prop stand things. Yeah. What they did was they came back into the work, these ideas, these seeds that were planted with these kind of little constructions, they came back into the work in a more technical way, where again, this is a certain height just facil to facilitate a transition, wh whatever, from three to four without stopping. And that's the, that's the new trick, like, well, without stopping. <laughs> um, but then the new constructions really started to facilitate completely new ways to, to juggle and manipulate things. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, uh, and that's definitely the rest of the stuff we're gonna, we're gonna look at, so.